The last few Sundays, we have been speaking on how we are to relate to people who are of different age and life stage. How we are to honour people who are older than us, people who are younger than us, and our own parents. Today, we want to continue on the same note. We ask the question, how are we to relate or to treat people who are of different race, people who are of different culture, different colours, different class, and from different countries. Today, fundamentally, the question is, are all people created equal? We must turn to the book of Genesis and re-look at the story of creation. Genesis 1 verse 26 to verse 27. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish, of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping things that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Did you notice that when God created man, he did not say, let there be man. In fact, he said it so personal. He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. It was so personal. In fact, God duplicated himself. He passed on his image to a created being, and that is Adam and Eve, you and I. Everything God created before the, seven, before the six days, he said, it is good. But then on the seventh day, he said, it is good. Very good. Why? Because man was different. Man was unique. Nothing else is made in the image of God. Only man. We are God's crowning achievement. So God saved the best for last. And truly, even though man was created last, but he is not the least in God's creation. Let us spend a few moments explaining what the image of God is. In fact, the word image simply means a resemblance. It speaks of a reflection and a representation. In the Bible dictionary, it defines the word image as an exact and complete copy or counterpart of anything. The image of God in which man was created was in his spiritual, intellectual, and moral nature in righteousness and true holiness. So simply, man receive, man is made of God's character. When you see Adam, you see God's character in him. Adam and Eve, as a result, could relate to God. Adam and Eve not only resembled him, reflected God, they represented God as well, and therefore, they could relate to God, the Creator. Here, we begin to see that the Bible tells us in the creation story, it was not the beginning of a special race of people when God first created the first human beings. He simply called him Adam and literally means mankind or humankind. Adam and Eve, they are not Hebrews or Jews or Egyptians or any other race that we know today. They have no race. They were not identified by their race. In fact, Adam and Eve, they were identified by their image of God, the Creator Himself. Not their skin color or their country of origin, not their class, none of that, but the Creator Himself. Since man was made in the image of God, the divine king, the creator himself, man was given the authority as well as the responsibility to give oversight, to take care, to tend the earth. Just as Adam and Eve reflected the image of God, earth reflected heaven, the house of God. And man was given dominion over the earth. Now, what would be the implication of what we just said? Listen carefully. If that is true, then all people are created equal. 
in the eyes of God. Not only they are created equal, they are equal and should be treated as equal because all of men and women have the image of God. And therefore, they must be treated with dignity as well as respect. Racism, ageism, sexism, classism, elitism, and all of this ism should have no place in our lives and in our church and also in our community. Then some of us will ask this question, Pastor, if all of us are equal and should be treated equal, then why are there people who are racist? People who would treat others differently. Well, I wanted to explain to us that even though we are all the same, but in this, in this reality, in this world, there's a lot of discrimination in the past as well as today, and I believe in the future as well. As people of God, how should we respond to this and how should we understand this? Now, firstly, we must tell you that it's because of the fallen nature of man because of sin. Sin has tarnished the image of God in us. The Bible story continues to tell us that Adam and Eve chose to sin against God. And because of that, they were asked to leave the presence of God. Sin has corrupted the world and sin has corrupted mankind. And today, when we look at each other, we cannot see the image of God clearly anymore. So subsequently, the children of Adam and Eve, they inherited a distorted, a tarnished image of God through their parents. What is the answer? The answer, the Bible tells us that God sent His only Son, His only Son, Jesus Christ, who would reflect His image clearly, just as Adam and Eve during creation. Turn with me to the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. After making purifications for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The Bible tells us that the word became flesh and, the, and dwelt among us. Jesus now, 2,000 years ago, came to this world and showed us the image of God again in humanity to all of us. And once again, 2,000 years ago and ever since, we could see the image of God in Christ and today through Christ. I want us to know Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He did not come to give us a new religion but Jesus came to give us a new relationship with the Father, the Creator Himself. The relationship that Adam and Eve lost in the Garden of Eden because they sinned against Him. Now Jesus came and offered us that same relationship for all of us. Now, Jesus came here on earth with a mission. And that is to take not only the penalty of sin, the sin that Adam created, the sin that Eve committed, but also he came to restore the image of God in us. Yes, you heard me correctly. What Adam lost, the image of God that was tarnished and that was destroyed. Jesus came not only to reveal to us God's image in him, but to offer again, to redeem us and to restore the image of God in us today. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Put on Christ. Christ who has the image of God, who reflects the image of God, who represents the image of God. Now we can put him on. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For our sake He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus came, He not only took our punishment and penalty, 
But Jesus took our place. The distorted image, He took our place. He took our unrighteousness so that we can take His place, the righteousness of God. So that we can take His place now, the clear image of God. He passed it on to us in exchange for the tarnished image. So, for all of us here who have put on Christ today, I want to say to us, we know how to treat people of different culture, of different class, of different colors and country of origin because of Jesus. Now we could see the image of God in each other. Now we know that this is how God views so and so. This is how God view me. This is how God view others. In fact, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. The second commandment is to love others just as we love ourselves. Why? Because we have the image of God. Someone said that racism is, it, it, it is when we treat others differently because of their color, culture, class, or country of origin. We treat others differently because of the external factor, because of the physical factor. That is racism. As people of God, we are not to treat them uh, uh, or discriminate them. We are not to be a racist. As the people of God today, we are to be gracious. When we treat them with the grace of God, when you put a G in front of the word racist, you become a gracist. When you see them through the eyes of Jesus Christ, see them as how God sees them, treat them as how God would treat them. And we are called to be gracious. We separate their deeds from the person. They, they, you have heard this phrase, love uh, uh, the sinners, but hate the sin. The action and the person, we separate them. We live in a world where it is very broken. It is very painful to watch how our world has deteriorated, how at times people dehumanize one another because they cannot see the value of another person, the value of life, the image of God in that person. What, what can we do? What is my role? I think it begins with you and I. It begins with us every day, everywhere, wherever you are. It begins with you, ICA. That you will become a gracious, that we would treat everyone equal because they have the image of God. And when we treat them in a, in a way that is honoring, uh, God is pleased and we're honoring the Creator Himself. Can we pause for a moment because we want to pray for our city, we want to pray for our world, that the churches, the believers will be gracious, we will be exemplary on how we will relate to one another in church, especially people who are different from us, and then how we will relate to people on the street, our neighborhood. Father, we thank you that today we can see so clearly again before Christ, we couldn't see clearly because of, of our fallen nature. But now that we have come into relationship with you, we begin to see our world so differently. We begin to value the people in our lives, the people around us. Today, you have called us to be the Jesus in our community, that we will honor people, that we will love them unconditional, that we will respect them. And Father, today we ask God, that we will be an uh, 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 agent of healing in this city, Hong Kong. Thank you, Jesus. Would you bless each one? In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you.